Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Champions of Chaos reveal. This time with Village the Cursling. So the Warriors of Chaos mono god style Zinchian Lord. Who starts in the top right hand corner of the map in the Eastern Steps. And starts off with a pretty decent army I must say. A lot of Chaos Warriors of Zinch. Uh, there's some Doom Knights, some Chaos Spawn and is ready to launch his invasion of Imperial Grand Cafe. So, as always, this is a campaign which is similar to the other Warriors of Chaos, but also very different because of how the whole sub-faction stuff classification comes into effect. So, let's not waste any more time, jump right in, talk about all the mechanics, talk about what makes him special, and go from there. We're going to start off with his unique faction effects known as Essence of Anarchy, which has the following benefits. Vassals gain increased barrier hit points and spread Zinch Corruption. This is something which is quite important because Zinch Corruption is going to allow you for better chances at recruiting certain demons. It's just in general better for recruitment and anyways other effects as you are aware at this point. Has access to changing other ways. Forces receive benefits for having high winds of magic. This is the usual stuff that you can expect. Converts a portion of own battle casualties into souls. So yes, the more of your own troops that die, the more souls you do get. And finally has access to teleport stance, which is the same as you might have been used to as Kairos Fate Weaver if you've ever played as the Xenian Monogod faction in Total War Warhammer 3. Village's own personal trait is known as Parasite, uh, very aptly named, and it has the following benefits. Steal 15% of the experience earned by other lords. This means that Village will be able to level up really really quickly if you have multiple armies and another way which I'll explain later on in the video then passive ability the twisted twin we'll talk about in a second and teleport stance usage cost minus 25% of winds of magic for lord's army when it comes to the twisted twin it's an augment you see the character is technically two despite being one entity and you get stronger by either casting spells or doing damage, which is pretty good because it's a hybrid character, you can see from the stats. Village is more than capable to be put into the front line to cast spells and just also do a lot of melee damage. It's a very, very good hybrid. His own unique skill line is also quite good. You see, you can just make your character stronger as you can expect. High casualty replenishment for uh, Forsaken of Zinch, Spawn of Zinch, even drastically reducing their upkeep by 50% for Lord's Army, which is absolutely insane. There are just so many ways to be able to be able to boost up the character, but this is really something that you want to focus around. Diplomacy relations with the other types of Chaos Factions, extra souls, which are very, very important. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Just in general, the skill line is one of the best ones, I must say. Other than that, he's a melee caster hybrid, but very good one at that. He's only got access to one item, that's the Vessel of Chaos. And you can see it on screen right now, it's not Maybe the best item, but it's not the worst either. Extra ward save is obviously very useful. Winds of Magic's uh, cost for Law of Zinch is very useful. Changing the ways cost for Drain Magic helps. So recruitment for the Warriors of Chaos under Village the Cursing is as expected, as you've seen the, through the other videos. You've got access to the Chaos of Warriors Undivided and also the Chaos Warriors of Zinch because you're a Zinchian faction. And you have a decent amount of units there. You've got the Doom Knights, you've got Chaos Warriors of Zinch, Chosen, the Knights, uh, pretty much anything that you kind of need for a Warriors of Chaos roster. And yeah, it's not too bad. Keep in mind that you can also mix and match with the Undivided units, and that means that you have an even bigger roster. It's just how these mono god style Warriors of Chaos factions actually work. And your roster is further expanded with the fact that you can also recruit some demons from Zinch's roster, also some Dragon Ogres and Hell Cannons too, and the Chaos War Shrine. And it's an uh, interesting thing. You see, the Chaos Warriors themselves are very, very strong. You know, they're very heavily armored. They've got access to the uh, barrier too. But then you add in some support from the Flying Screamers, the Pink Horrors, even the Flamers of Zinch. So you have a lot of extra firepower. This means that you will be the Chaos Warrior faction with a lot of range. And, <laughs> you know, Flamers are very, very strong. They're able to do a lot of damage. There's nothing that I can really say against them. Like, it's definitely a strong faction. I think that the Warriors of Zinch, especially quite early on, do feel like they are the strongest. 
As always, I do have to explain that you do have access to the Gifts of Chaos, but only to the Gifts of Zinch and the Gifts of Undivided. Gifts of Zinch is how you'll be able to recruit your Demons of Zinch, so you'll have to spend souls, and then there's an upkeep, then that gives you a unit instantly, and then every three turns or so, you'll get a new one to be able to recruit instantly. It's an interesting system, it'll take a while to get used to, but you can also get quite a lot of benefits here. There are some negatives too, keep in mind that this is very Zinchian, and you are going to be one of the strongest ones. Also, it's very weird that the eyes just follow you around. I mean, it just kind of makes sense, but um, I've only just really noticed right now. Anyways, it's early that you'll be able to get pink horrors and stuff like that, so it's not going to take too long to be able to do some damage. Zinchian demons mixed with Chaos Warriors of Zinch are really potent, like I said, because they're easily defended. Then obviously afterwards you do have the undivided ones, which works in more of an administration way. It's also how you get your hell cannons. It's also how you get the war shrines and all that type of stuff. It very much depends on way which way you want to go. Keep in mind that these things are still expensive in upkeep and stuff, and it does take a while to be able to unlock them all if you're playing quite early into your campaign, so you need to build up a reservoir of souls or be in a very active area for battles to be able to get more souls more quickly to keep up with keeping your gifts. And again, you do have access to authority. This is an important mechanic if you want to reduce your upkeep, your casualty replenishment, your recruitment cost, and even your warband upgrades. This is normally gotten through some techs, uh, leveling up your characters, getting certain skill points, even some heroes too. Lords and heroes have access to this. It's quite important to keep your eye on because like I said in loads of videos, the Warrior of Chaos economy is not that great. And you're going to need every upkeep reduction that you could possibly get your hands on in order to have a smooth sailing campaign. Now let's talk about the tech tree. So I know this is not like the most exciting thing, but it is to me, and I've said this in the other videos too, because we know that the Warriors of Chaos, the ones from the standard original DLC and even Bellacore have their own tree, but the ones from Champion of Chaos have their own dedicated tree. This is more representative of them being a stylized mono-god faction in a sense. So as you can see here with Village, it's one section, the outer sections, are focused on Zinchian stuff like increasing barrier, uh, being able to get some of the Zinchian mechanics from the mono-god faction and all that type of stuff. Whereas the inner section is more focused on your administration, which is very, it's actually the same as Azazel, Valkyria, and Festus, but I think that works out very, very well as it gives you more of a proper stylized thing. It gives you a sense of identity, like if you are playing as a Zinchian faction, but without playing as the Mono God faction, which, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. You've seen all the effects, you can stop wherever you want. It's not a big tree, it's not a big tree at all, but it's big enough to be able to keep you entertained for a while, give you loads of different things to be able to check out and loads of extra battle effects too. As usual, I do have to mention this in every video, you have a Dark Fortress, these are your main types of settlements, the other ones are really not worth it because they work like outposts and you're better off giving the outposts to your allies. So how it works here is that your main settlements will be able to generate a decent amount of cash for you and these are really important. Your economy needs to be focused on here. There are loads of buildings which can also increase the amount of cash that you're getting. And believe me, it does help. It really does help. Because the Wars of Chaos are not a cheap faction to start running. And you're going to need multiple armies eventually if you want more souls. If you want to be able to deal with everyone eventually turning against you. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of needed. You've also got access to the Changing of the Ways mechanic. Which is a smaller version. However, still quite good. I'll be going through them you know, you've got all the stuff that you can kind of expect, and I am really happy about this. It's actually a really good mechanic. Spawnify is really good because you can get some extra kill spawn units. Uh, it's a great way to be able to just have some unbreakable troops. You can also do that to your allies, it seems, too. Though I haven't tested it out, but I have seen Lokia running around with spawn before. Exactly, free spawn, which is what Spawnify does. So yeah, it's uh, it's a fun mechanic and it obviously fits well with Village the Cursling. So just a little tip here, when you go into Grand Cafe, there's not that many Dark Fortresses. I believe there's only around two in there. So if you do want to get more, you'll want to go through the Northern Chaos Waste. And given how money kind of works and the security of that area, you are perfectly fine to be able to do so. In my own personal campaign, I had an army going straight into Grand Cafe and another army going through the Northern Waste. Eventually meeting Kolek, that was a bit of an interesting encounter, but it's uh, very doable as long as you plan ahead. Multiple armies, especially for Village, who does benefit from that, is obviously quite encouraged. Now, 
Keep in mind that if you want to dedicate lords to Zinch, you have to go for the Law of Metal. These are the only ones that dedicate to Zinch. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad. It's a good law. Eventually you can get the Law of Zinch too. But this is if you want to go with a theme. You can get the other laws, but you know what I mean. Plus the Law of Metal ones can have the chance of getting extra authority or Path to Glory, which reduces the soul cost to be able to dedicate. So it does become beneficial. You do have a set of unique commandments, which are very Zinchian, surprise, surprise. So you can increase your research rate, which is very, very useful, or even spread some Zinchian corruption. It depends on which one you want. They're all actually really, really good as far as I've seen. Minus one that reduces your control a little bit, but control shouldn't be too much of an issue considering that, well, you know, the corruption gives you extra control anyway, and you're, you're going to be in a good place. When it comes to dedication, as I've explained before, you just need to get to a certain rank and then you have to spend souls. They can be kind of expensive, uh, which, yeah, probably not the best time to dedicate very early on, but this is just a showcase video, so it's fine for me. And yeah, they get a new look, they get new abilities, you can even get a new Law of Magic, so the Law of Metal can then get into the Law of Zinch if you so wish. You've also got access to the Disc of Zinch with your Chaos uh, Sorcerers of Zinch, which I think is freaking cool. I'm a big fan of the disc in general. And that can be expanded even further with the Lord as the Lord can then devote themselves to becoming a Demon Prince. So yeah, it's very much the same. Um, one thing I will suggest, and this is a little bit of a tip, is the fact that if you can have a second army running early with Village just to kind of get some more experience, which then transfers over to Village anyway because he steals a portion, it's a faster way to level up Village whilst you're waiting for that second army to then go on, on itself. It's just something that I've noticed in my own playthroughs, and it's just kind of good that way because you make Village into a powerhouse very, very, very early into your campaign, and that's kind of what you want anyway because you're fighting a lot of cafe, which has a lot of gunpowder, and yeah. So we're going to start talking about the roster now, checking out all the units and the stats and all that. So we have Village the Cursing himself. This is your legendary lord. Uh, a very, very potent character which is able to do a lot of things because he's good for melee he's very very good for melee gets stronger in melee combat good for spell casting too and even gets stronger as he casts spells so either way this is a character that you can have front and center doing a lot of damage it's extremely versatile it's something that's kind of nice because i know a lot of people have been wanting a front line for zinch for a long long time keep in mind that the units themselves are also available for the zinchian faction obviously not village but you know what i mean but if you're looking for the heavy armor front line that zinch has always needed here you go with village your Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Zinch is your generic Lord choice. He looks freaking cool. I love the look. It's just, it reminds me of old artwork, which is, uh, it's just kind of nice, you know? And you can get them with either the Lord of Metal or the Lord of Zinch, so you do have some variety. You can get the other spellcasters too, so don't really worry too much about that. In general, you've got access to quite a lot, and you should take advantage of that. Both laws can do a lot of damage, as you've probably already been used to, so yeah, it's not too bad. And then that can be further expanded upon when you dedicate them into a Demon Prince of Zinch. Once again, it's Lord Metal or Lord of Zinch, but you've got access to being able to fly around. So if you don't like the disc and you prefer a bigger demon that's got a little bit more of a tankiness to him, yeah, I mean, you've got... Pretty good options. They're all spellcasters, but they're able to be in front line. This is the great thing about Zinch. It's not weakness, it's actually strength, then enhanced by magic. For a generic hero choice, you do have the Chaos Sorcerer of Zinch, and this is either Lore of Metal or Lore of Zinch. There's not really too much to talk about here. It's acting very much the same as the Lord option, but rather than being a Lord, it is a hero. And yeah, still able to be frontline. It's an important thing because I know a lot of people think that spellcasters should be weak. And yes, that's true for most spellcasters. They shouldn't be able to do damage up front. But a spellcaster of Zinch, which has got Chaos Armor, I mean, it's going to do damage, right? So if we jump into the units now, we're going to start off with the Marauders of Zinch. We have two variants, which are the ones with sword and board, and then the ones with spears, which is an entirely new unit. And yes, I know some people are going to say no, because Norska has spearmen. I'm talking about a new unit for the Chaos Warriors. This was never in the army book, so it is still a new unit, and that gives you some anti-large at the very beginning, which is kind of helpful. Not maybe so much versus, say, for example, Grand Cafe, but if you're going to be fighting ogres, and you're going to be fighting ogres, considering that the Mountains of Mourn are very close to you, yeah, it's going to be quite helpful. Plus, you know, the fact that they've got barrier makes them more durable. They've got the Mark of Zinch, which, you know, is the barrier and all that type of stuff, giving them magical attacks too. It's all very, very helpful. Doom Knights of Zinch. Now, we're not going to talk about these too much, considering the fact that they're from the base game of Warhammer 3, so you're already kind of used to these. They're a completely new unit. They never existed on the tabletop before, which I'm really happy that they exist now, because big hope for Old World. Very, very fast-moving. An excellent shock troop. This is... 
just amazing flying cavalry. I think that's the best way that we can call them, because technically they are cavalry. These discs of Zinch themselves are actually supposed to be demons, so yeah, they're actually supposed to be screamers. So yeah, I actually, I'm a big fan of this unit. I'm a very, very big fan in general. Chaos Spawn of Zinch, again, something that we're already used to from the base game of Warhammer 3, but still very useful because they're unbreakable, they're able to do a lot of damage. If you want a ground shock troop that can do damage, maybe you can't get the Doom Knights just yet, these are still very, very valuable, the fact that they're also able to do siege attacks too, you know, it's just great for launching invasions. Plus, you can get them really easily with Spawnify, so... Yeah, I mean, there's not really a... Um, there's no downside, there's really no downside to them. Plus the fact that they have barrier too, I mean, every Xenchen unit has barrier, but this is even better because that makes them very, very durable. Now, this one's quite good because obviously you need to have Marauder Horsemen to eventually turn them into Knights and turn them into Doom Knights, but the Marauder Horsemen of Zinch are pretty good because, you know, very fast, very, very fast, 90 speed, magic attacks too, and flaming attacks, so you get a little bit more punch added in. So the damage output is generally quite good. The fact that they can Vanguard 2 and fire on the move, it's just, it helps. It definitely helps to have a skirmishing unit, which is able just to add a little bit more flavor to your army, as you will get some range, yeah, because, yeah, this is a basic range, but, you know, the flamers and then obviously the pink horrors, but having a skirmishing range unit is quite good. Now to the Chaos War Shrine of Zinch. Obligatory. I can't believe we're finally getting this unit because I have been waiting a long time. So this is a buffer unit which can increase spell mastery for your characters as just being around those areas when entities start dying. It's very useful. It is very, very useful because, you know, spell mastery is uh, a big thing when it comes to being a Zinchian faction. You know, you want to be able to cast as many spells as possible and do as much damage as possible. And, I mean, they're just cool. And I'm just saying this in every video, but cool factor is a big thing. I don't care what people think. I love the unit. Chaos Chariots of Zinch are a big thing here. This was a really, 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 really popular unit on the tabletop. Um, I'm not too fond of using them here. Uh, but I do love them on the tabletop. I actually have like about four painted up in the Zinchian colors, uh, mainly because they were just so strong and able to do so much damage. But it very much depends if you like them or not. Just because I don't like them doesn't mean that you don't have to. It's just more on the style of play that you're doing yourself, really. Chaos Knights of Zinch are another big thing, which were a very popular thing on the tabletop once again, mainly because they were very durable, and they're very durable here too because of the barrier. You've got two variants, the Sword and Shield, and then obviously... The Lancers, which are anti-infantry. Uh, general, I mean, you can't really go wrong with these guys. They do a lot of damage, and they're, they're your next path before you get to the Doom Knights, which a lot of people are going to want Doom Knights, so you're going to want these anyway. Plus the fact is, I mean, they look cool, they look badass, and yeah, Knights are cool. Chaos Warriors of Zinch, you have two different variants. You've got the Sword and Shield, and then obviously you have the Halberds. The Halberds themselves are not part of this DLC. Keep that in mind. They are actually part of the FLC, which will be dropping around the patch. But this is your front line. This is your heavy front line. Barrier, once again, very, very doable. The Halberd version is very popular on the tabletop, but also the Sword and Shield one too, because, you know, you want something to be able to hold back and do as much damage as possible. They are good. I'm really liking the Zinch Chaos Warriors. I think they look cool too. The helmets, they're just a little stylized. It's nothing too there, but they still look Zinchian. The shields look absolutely gorgeous. It's not like, say, for example, the Nurgle ones, which are a bit lacking. But in general, stat-wise, they're very, very, very good. Magical attacks, too. I mean, everything that you've had here is pretty much magical attacks. So you, you've got a lot of an output there. And, yeah, they're just very, very useful all around. I think the Zinch faction is extremely tanky overall. And finally, the Chosen of Zinch, which we've got two variants once again. The Sword and Board or the Halberds. The Halberds look absolutely amazing. I'm a very big fan of the look. But in general, yeah, a... Um, updated version of the Warriors of Chaos, much, much stronger, able to do much better damage. I'm a big fan, it's just there's not too much to talk about here. I would have liked if we would have had a variant of Halberds with shields too, because that was something that you could do on the tabletop for extra armor save, um, but I guess they wanted to do this as a proper two-handed weapon instead, which, you know, is fair, is fair. I'm not complaining, I mean, they still do a lot of damage anyway, but you know me, I, I kind of just want everything if I can. Anyways, the roster might not seem too excited, but once you start pairing with Zinchian demons, yeah, it's pretty good. Having an extremely durable front line, which can also do a decent amount of damage, and then being supported by flamers and pink horrors, it's all pretty good in general. You've got a lot of units to play with, they're quite thematic, you know, it's got that whole tabletop kit bash feel to them. You've got some new units alongside that. In general, 
I think that Zinch is in a very good place. Keep in mind that these warriors will also be available for Zinch and Kairos. And uh, yeah, I just realized also I forgot about the Forsaken, but uh, uh, it's Forsaken, you know, seeing as you can just get Spawn through Spawnify, I really don't see a point in the Forsaken. Yes, they're a decent shock troop, but Spawn and Doom Knights, I mean, they kind of do that for you. All in all, the faction is pretty good. It's a stripped down version of Kairos, which makes a lot of sense. Everything is still very much a Warriors of Chaos faction. It still feels like a Warriors of Chaos faction. You don't need the demons if you don't want to, by the way. I know I've been saying that you can have the support and all that, and I, that's just how I'm playing it. But you really don't need it. They can handle themselves without needing the demons. But if you want to go full optimal, it just kind of helps in general. But let me know what you guys think about Village and his faction in the comments below. And let's start a bit of a discussion. By this time that the video goes live, I should still be streaming on twitch.tv slash the Great Book of Grudges. If you want to join, say hi, talk about the DLC, because I can talk now. I can actually talk about everything now, which is really fun. So I shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.